We welcome everyone to this short service for Tuesday of Holy Week, especially people from Pennycook Churches together. We're glad you can join us. I want to thank everyone responsible for this service. A lot of work has gone on behind the scenes. And I'd like to welcome our speaker today, Jordan Hope from Destiny Church. This week, we're following some of the events in the week leading up to Jesus' death on the cross. We remember that on this day, our Lord returned from Bethany to Jerusalem. He taught in the temple. He met and defeated the arguments of those who stood against him, who were seeking to trap him. He told the parables of the tenants in the vineyard, the two sons and the wedding feast. He foretold the destruction of Jerusalem and described the final judgment. Here is a sentence from Holy Scripture, from the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 4. The Word of God is alive and active. It cuts more keenly than any two-edged sword. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my way still you're there right beside me nothing will I fear as long as you are near please be near me to the end thy word is a lamp unto my feet Let us pray. God our Father, search us and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. Keep us from following the wrong way and lead us in the way of eternal life through Jesus your Son. We confess to you that we've sinned against his warnings and commands. We've sometimes doubted your goodness and turned away from your truth. Lead us into your light to be restored and forgiven through Jesus. Give us grace to welcome his teaching with a humble spirit and to be obedient to the truth. Help us to pay attention to his warnings that we may be alert and ready for his coming and faithful in the work you've given us to do. By the love and power of your cross, draw us to you in willing surrender. Help us to follow you all the days of our life on earth, that in the time of testing and in the hour of our death, we may overcome by your power in us and stand before you 
with nothing to make us afraid. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading today is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 36. Jesus predicts his crucifixion. Now, some Greeks were among those who went up to worship at the festival. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested of him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus replied to them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The one who loves his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. Now my soul is troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But that is why I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus responded, This voice came not, from, not for me, but for you. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. As for me, if I am lifted up from this earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate what kind of death he was about to die. Then the crowd replied to him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus answered, The light will be with you only a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness doesn't overtake you. The one who walks in darkness doesn't know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. Jesus said this, then went away and hid from them. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Well, hello, folks. Great to be with you. If you don't know me, my name is Jordan. I'm one of the pastors at Destiny Church, Edinburgh. And we currently, or should I say used to, meet in Pennycook Town Hall. But like many of you, we are now connecting online. It is an interesting time that we're living in. I did not expect to give this address from my phone. Um, but we thank God for technology. The past few weeks, so I think our society has learned a lot about ourselves. For many of us, we've learned that the things that we put our, we've put our trust and our hope in, our job, our finances, some of the systems in place, we realise they're not as secure as we originally thought. The past few weeks, personally, I've learned a lot about myself. I've been stuck at home like many of you with my wife, who's not been very well, and my two young kids. And I have realised... I am not as patient as I thought I was. In fact, if I'm being honest, I've realised I'm much more selfish than I ever realised. I've come to learn that I like my own space. I like having my own personal time. I like my freedom to be able to do what I want, when I want. The trouble is you can't do any of those things or you don't get any of those things when you're stuck at home with two young kids. Many of us have had to learn the past few weeks how to live differently. We've had to learn what it means to, to let go of things and not do everything we want to do. Now, this is relevant as in the reading we just read from where Jesus is about to be glorified. He shares a bit about what it means to follow him. The words of our Lord are often challenging and that's no less so here. Jesus says in the passage we just read, The one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, Jesus says, he must follow me. See, the message of our culture today 
is do what makes you happy. Live for you. But the message of Jesus Christ is if you want life, don't live for yourself. Live for God. And when Jesus uses the words hate your life, the strong words, he doesn't literally mean you have to hate yourself to follow him. What he does mean though is that you have to consider your own life secondary to his. In, in your life, compared to Jesus, you must come second. Now following Jesus is the most wonderful thing a person can do. But it's not always easy. In following him, the Lord may ask you to do something you don't want to do. In following him, the Lord may ask you to give something up. He may ask you to make a sacrifice to follow him, to put your own life plans on hold and instead to follow his plans. Now that's hard for many people. As we've seen the past few weeks, many people in our culture at our core were selfish. We have seen people hoard stock and stockpile essential items that many of us need without giving consideration that other people might need them. We've seen people buy essential things for a cheap price and then sell them for a profit. But the call of God for any Christian is for us to deny ourselves, to die to our own wants and desires, to die to our own attempts to be righteous and instead to follow the God who made us, who knows what is best for us. Instead of focusing on our own efforts, we are instead to rely on Jesus. And by doing that, that is how we find life. Now, Jesus Christ, he was the perfect example of what this means, or what this looks like. See, Jesus himself was troubled. In the passage we just read, Jesus called out, my soul is troubled. And as we go further down Holy Week into the Garden of Gethsemane, we'll see Jesus in the garden with anxiety filling his heart. Yet however troubled Jesus felt in his humanity, he always put his Father's will above his own. In fact, in the passage in John, Jesus called out, Father, glorify your name. And what Jesus meant by that, he was saying, Father, whatever, whatever it takes, whatever the cost to me, even if it means having nails driven through my hands and my feet, glorify my, your name. Your will be done. See, Jesus Christ willingly went to the cross because it was his Father's will. And to be a fruit-bearing disciple of Jesus who follows in his footsteps, we have to consider what we want to be secondary. And just like Jesus did, we have to be willing to follow him and pray, Father, glorify yourself, whatever the cost may be. Now the good news is though, is that this self-denial, this sacrifice, it is the best thing we can do. Because what we'll find is that it leads to life. You know, we have seen great selfishness in our culture the past few weeks, but we've also seen great acts of care and kindness and love and of self-denial. I remember in, reading an article just a couple of weeks ago. A priest in Italy, Don Giuseppe Berardelli, he was on a ventilator in hospital, ill, and the hospital didn't have enough ventilators for everyone. So this priest, he gave his ventilator to a young man who needed it. And the young man thankfully lived. But the priest, Don Giuseppe Berardelli, he sadly died. However, his self-denial meant that another person would live. And you know, many of Jesus' enemies thought that his death on the cross was a defeat. But days before that, in this passage we just read, Jesus made it clear the cross was not a defeat. For in John 12, Jesus said, Now the prince of this world will be cast out. The ruler of this world will be cast out. And when the book of John talks about the prince or ruler of this world, often he is talking about the devil. And what Jesus was saying is that his death on the cross marked the end of the devil's rule. Satan, sin and death no longer have a hold on this world now. We still face illness, we'll still suffer, but we need no longer fear death because Jesus Christ defeated it on the cross. And the promise of the gospel is that if we share in Jesus' sufferings, if we die to ourselves, we are assured the same victory over death. We are promised the gift of eternal life. Jesus says in this passage, If anyone serves me, he must also follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. 
Jesus promises us, if we follow him into death, we'll also follow him in his resurrection. Now this is a time in our society when many people are fearful. Many are suddenly aware of the reality of death. Many are aware of the reality of death. But the gospel reminds us that if our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, we need not fear death. Whatever you lose or give up in this life to follow Jesus, it is not worth comparing to what you will gain. Jesus finishes the passage by saying this, Believe in the light so that you may become children of light. If we believe in Jesus, it is promised that we will become children of God. And can I encourage you, there is nothing more secure than that. So if you're anxious on this week, if you're anxious this week at this time, can I encourage you, reflect upon the Lord. Reflect upon the cross. If your faith is in Jesus, if you are a child of the light, whatever happens on this earth, whatever circumstances you may face, because of Jesus' self-sacrifice, who died and rose again, we can have absolute security and no situation, no tragedy, and no virus can take that away from us. So on this Holy Tuesday, Jesus reminds us, we do not find life by seeking glory for ourselves, but true life comes from a life dedicated to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we bring to you in prayer the people of India, particularly this church's partners, in the Diocese of Eastern Himalaya and the Pastorate of Santopur. Let them find in you support throughout the long days. Help them in dealing with the isolation of lockdown and the practicalities of caring for each other. Enable them to cast all their anxieties on you because you care for them. And may we together with them, still praise you and trust in your unfailing love. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.